Hey there kids, I have a major announcement. We are recently announcing Chilling 2.0. So until Chilling, there is no dedicated platform for diverse and passionate horror fans to create content, to listen to their favorite spooky stories and meaningfully connect with other fans. So the Chilling platform is currently growing and you all are invited to grow with it by becoming a co-owner or investor. Chilling was bootstrapped to where we are today, reinvesting everything back into the platform. And that means the community that you've come to know and be terrified by was grown organically and became profitable with no outside investors. But as with all successful ventures, the time's come for us to supercharge our growth. And that means opening our investing floor to new investors. We're launching an equity crowdfunding campaign on Republic, where investors just like you can purchase shares of Chilling and be part of our story. As we grow, so does your investment and your potential returns. If you're interested, check out the link below and join us Tuesday, August 30th at 3 p.m. or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Wednesday, August 31st at 9 a.m. Eastern Time to learn more. The link to the campaign is in the description down below. And now, on to tonight's story. Working as a border patrol agent is a scarier job than most people think, especially during late night shifts. I worked in an area where there's a lot of action including smuggling of people, guns, drugs, other illegal materials. There are cartel operations, coyotes, gangs, and lone wolves, everything in between. During these overnight shifts, I was thankful when I had the opportunity for company, even if it was in the form of green guild trainee. Jake was as green as they come. Quiet night tonight, he was saying, looking out the window shield, desperately hoping for anyone or something to challenge our authority. So when are we going to see some action? You don't want action, kid. Trust me. Before the night's done, we'll run into something. This is the witching hour. All the players come out this time of night. But what if we need to change spots? Maybe they saw us here and... Quiet, Jake. You need to keep quiet or you'll give away our location. Nobody knows we're here. If we drive away now, you're going to spook them. Just watch. Learn, Okay. There's a reason they put you with me tonight. You wanted your first caller? Because you're going to get it. I was struck by a familiar feeling of deja vu. Same scene playing out over and over again in this truck. Maybe one day it'll be different. Maybe one day I get out to retire. He settled down, moping in the passenger seat. The kid didn't understand the job. He didn't know what it was like to sit out here alone, surrounded by desert hills with no backup for miles and miles. These old cliffs and low mountains were dotted with mine shafts and tunnels, blasted out of the sand and stone long before we were born, and they afforded plenty of places to hide. There were people who wanted us dead out here in the desert. They could be glad to have the chance to make that happen. One spot in particular caught my eye. At the same time, Jake noticed it. Hey, do you see that light? No. Look right up there, he pointed right next to my face, his index finger indicating an obvious orb of light. Nope, don't see anything. You know what, maybe we should move after all. He jerked his head down as if afraid of being spotted. They're looking right at us, I, I think. No, it doesn't look like they can see us. Of course not, I thought to myself, because this is a good spot to hide. That's why I come here. How many are there? I asked, resigning to the fact that this was happening now. We're going to pursue them, or at least... He was going to pursue him. Looks like two, maybe three at most. S uh, smugglers, by the look of it. Okay, I said. Well, don't go doing anything stupid. Just stay put. Let me call it in. We'll get back up out here. They'll be gone by the time they arrive. Come on, the two of us should stop them. He cracked open his window slowly, then got out. I had the interior lights rigged to stay dim so that it wouldn't give away our location to anyone. He closed his door as silently as he could the soft sound of metal clicking back into place indicating he was really leaving. I just sighed, knowing how this is going to go. It always seemed to go the same way. The deja vu feeling struck again, but only for a second as I ran to catch up with the kid. Slow down. You need to stay hidden for an approach like this. We're too out in the open. He ignored me, continuing his trajectory as if I wasn't even there with him. I'm trying to help you. Listen to me. You're going to get yourself killed. He kept marching stubbornly forward, and I saw where he was headed. One of the black holes cut out in the face of the mountain was straight ahead, 
an old mine shaft that had been out of use for decades. They're heading for the tunnel. We need to cut them off before they get there, he said, like a character in a play who's committed to saying the lines that he had rehearsed, despite the improvisations of the other cast members. His breath was growing labored. He sounded like he was getting winded already. He hadn't even started chasing anyone yet. Adrenaline can give you a lot of strength and speed, but it doesn't last long. And when that endorphin rush is over, you're more tired than you'd normally be. And that's why I try to stay calm in situations like this, but I didn't have time to teach him that lesson yet. We finally reached the doorway to the mine shaft after a long, long hike. The smugglers he had seen had made it there a few minutes before us and had given no indication of noticing our paths towards them. Still, I got the feeling they knew that we were coming. Despite my years on Border Patrol, they knew this desert a hell of a lot better than us. Okay, what's next, boss? Jake said, looking at me as we stood outside the tunnel entrance. It's not up to me, Jake. You already made this decision for yourself. I told you we needed backup. You didn't listen. Oh, come on, man. Just think about how excited everyone at the station's gonna be when they see that we caught these guys by ourselves. They probably have a bunch of cocaine or heroin or something. We'll be heroes. Don't do it, kid. Yet please, just listen to me. He didn't listen. Instead, he went straight inside the tunnel, and I stupidly followed after him. We kept our flashlights off, moving towards the sound of voices echoing in the distance. It sounded like two men having a conversation. They were laughing and joking, and I could hear glasses clinking as if they were celebrating something with a toast. We got him, man, Jake whispered with his gun drawn. I could see his hands trembling, his legs wobbly with each nervous step that he took forward. The sounds of their voices grew louder as we drew closer. With each step, I felt more certain of what would happen next. Like a jump scare in a horror movie. I knew it was coming. But I didn't know exactly when. And then, it really did begin to play out like a movie. We rounded the corner to find two men sitting in front of a small fire. They were drinking and laughing, smoking hand-rolled cigarettes, which were clenched in their yellowed fingers. Hands up! Get them up now! Border Patrol, you're both under arrest! Jake was yelling at the two men as they put their hands in the air. Cigarettes dangling from their lower lips, and looked particularly worried. Under arrest? For what? One of them asked in broken English. We're just camping here. You Americans have laws against camping? Jake's gun began to lower slightly, as if he was taken aback by the question. But a second later, he raised it at their heads again, as if remembering who he was and what we were doing out here. You two came across the border illegally. I saw it. Now I'm guessing those two bags you were carrying that you had something with you. Something heavy. What bags? You see any bags? The two men were looking at him as if he was an idiot. And Jake looked uncertain again. And there was another man, Jake. You said two or three of them, remember? He didn't seem to hear me. Instead, he went towards the two men, getting within arm's reach of both. Alarm bells began to ring in my mind as I thought about the danger he was putting himself in. Then the other man emerged from the side tunnel, his gun raised. Drop it! Jake yelled. There were the last words from his mouth. Three loud shots rang out in the tunnel, their echoes reverberating painfully and piercing my ears until it felt like my eardrums would explode. Jake was on the ground a moment later, bleeding out. His blood so dark in the dim light that it appeared almost black the crude oil leaking from the floor beneath him. You shouldn't have come here, a voice said. Another shot rang out. I felt a hollow ache in my gut, an emptiness where the bullet had been. I remembered falling to the floor in that exact spot where I stood now. I remembered the pain of the shot, now just a distant memory. The voices of the men fleeing in the tunnel were loud at first, and then grew quieter as I disappeared into the distance. My heart was thumping fast as I looked down at Jake the blood pouring out of his mouth, dribbling down his chin as he coughed and sputtered, saying, Sorry, boss. Should have listened to you. It's okay, kid. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna make it. I promise. You're gonna see your mom again, just like I promised her this morning. I'm gonna take care of you. My voice trailed off as his breathing slowed and stopped. One more ragged, crackling inhalation could be heard as he tried desperately to fight off death. The exhale came wet and bubbling. There was nothing else after that. He was dead. I left him there. 
As I walked back towards the truck through the darkness of the desert, I couldn't help but lift my shirt at the bottom, fingering the scar where the bullet had gone in. All these years later, I was still there, like a trophy, souvenir or something awful. The truck was up on the hill, dim and quiet. I marched towards it again, I got in, I caught my breath as I sat down. Memories of what I'd seen played out in my mind. Everything's so real, I can practically reach out and touch it. I just wished I could forget those memories. Wish I didn't have to relive them over and over again. Wish I didn't have to see all my mistakes. All the things I could have done better. The ways I could have saved them over and over, replaying like a movie I'd seen a thousand times before. The stories of this area, the deserts, plentiful. There's a lot of action that happens around here, and I don't just mean illegal border crossings. There's another border we seem to share, and lines are blurred at this time of night between the world of the living and the world of the dead. More than one Border Patrol agent has told me that they've seen ghosts in that exact spot. A lot of them describe him as the same person. A young recruit who looks eager and ready for duty. He's a bit green around the gills, but he's clearly motivated. He wanted to do good. He wants to help people. He's on the one who sees him the most, though. Which is fitting. Since I'm the one who his mother blamed for his death. A chill ran down my spine as I felt eyes watching me from the passenger seat. I saw a flash of white light appear beside me. Fear gripped me anew. Even though I liked to pretend this was all normal, it didn't get any less terrifying when it happened. Still, I felt like I owed it to Jake to give him a little taste of real life again, even if it was repetuous. Like a movie being played on a loop over and over again. Usually he didn't make two visits in one night, but tonight was special. It was the anniversary. And it was the witching hour. And that time of night when the veil gets so thin you could see right through it. And you could reach out and touch what's on the other side. Quiet night tonight, Jake said from the seat next to me. So, when are we going to get to see some action? Hey guys, it's still hot out, like unreasonably hot out. And you know what's great when it's unreasonably hot out? Iced tea. So if you guys like iced tea, check out Ivory Monocle Tea. Uh, it's my wife's uh, loose leaf tea thing she does on Etsy. Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. You can get a whole bunch of different kinds of teas on there. They could be made hot if you're insane, or they could be made cold if you live anywhere near the equator. So check out etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea and you can get a whole bunch of different kinds of teas from the fruity kind to the caffeinated kind to the kind that's named after creepypasta things even one that's named after me my dark and stormy night and if you ask when you order that tea you can get a little mcp dabbing sticker along with it oh also i don't think i've ever mentioned this but i sign all the cards if they're like horror related teas so if you ever wanted that Check that out. That's uh, the only, I guess, the only place you can get it now. <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Dickie McQuickie, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Spooky Shell, Adam Maros, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke369, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Estebot, Braden Morris, Nate Cull, Horror Fan1212, Hour Minute Second Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochie Boochie, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxenum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Catabaker, Six Gay Rats in a Trenchcoat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Cryolinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goring from Magazine, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Eka Limchok, Dirt Diver O3 Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welverick, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so, so much because you guys help me do everything that I do here. You guys help pay authors for stories and commission stories and do everything that I can do to make this channel and make this podcast the best it could possibly be. So thank you all for supporting me here. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams.